Hi, Spyro here. I haven't done... I, okay, I did this video a long time ago, but I felt like I didn't have it done properly in the way that I did want it to be done because I was in a different place and now I'm better with uh, making videos, at least to some degree. Okay, so this starts off with, well, mainly the fact that I did this as a piece for um, my business and professional speaking class, but I think that, well, we got to choose our topics for the most part, and I feel like this is something that I definitely want to talk about, and I feel like it's really necessary. So, the topic was uh, things that we could improve, that we think we could, that should be improved, and I said feminism. And then I started off by, we're just going to go into roughly the speech now, but it's been like two years, so, you know. Hi, I'd like to talk about feminism. And so, well, I know you may be thinking, oh, well, yeah, he's going to talk about, like, stopping the feminazis and um, making extreme feminists just be a thing of the past. Well, no, my thing that I want to talk about is actually making this for men. And now, no, don't get me wrong, I know that feminism, it, it seems presumptuous of me to already jump and take the feministic idea and push it into the male narrative, but I think we do need to look out for men also. There's s staggering statistics of white men who kill themselves before the age of 30. It, se it seems to be that in most situations, uh, men are the domestic abusers in a domestic violence situation and relationships and it is the staggering difference between men and women who do resort to being addicted to drugs, be it alcohol, cigarettes, or any other unhealthy coping mechanisms. And so I think we need to make feminism better for men. So, for, for starters, I'll start off with a question. This is part of the speech. I'd like to start off with a question. You don't have to raise your hands. I just know that you're all going to feel this one. When, within the first week of class, how many of you thought I was gay? You don't have to raise your hand. It's fine. But, you know, a lot of you, right? And I want to know why. You don't have to answer. But what of me made you think that I was gay? I don't talk too differently. I don't, I, I'm sure I dress weird, but does that mean I'm gay? What specific things dictated my sexuality to you, and what does that imply? So to me, as a homosexual, as a gay man, I come across as not really masculine, and I'm also feminized in a way. So I sit socially in between the spectrum of a man or a female except I myself fully identify as a man and a male. To me, the reason I wear these clothes and the clothes that I do wear is solely on the fact that I like clothes and I think the clothes that men have are relatively d dull and boring. But to any outsider, seeing me dress in such a way would convey that I am a homosexual man. And being a homosexual man, I feel I have been ostracized by men and been slightly integrated to some degree, into the feminine depictions. But my problem is, upon that, in, upon introspection and knowing my place in the social spectrum, I haven't been taken seriously by either. So when it comes to men, I myself never feel like I can have a male friend, a heterosexual male friend. And I come to these problems where if I do have a heterosexual male friend, if he is interested in the arts, if he is, if his voice is just slightly light, if he's creative or artistic or emotionally expressive, I, even myself, am like, oh, maybe this guy's gay. And that's terrible. That's terrible because there's no reason that I should have the feeling of hope that maybe I could have a relationship with someone just because they are emotionally vulnerable. Because to me, what has come through about being gay and being feminized to a degree is femininity given like the social spectrum of masculinity and femininity has mainly been emotional honesty and emotional vulnerability. You see that no, in most situations, the man is supposed to be the one who takes care of the other person and who uh, doesn't show weakness, is strong, the paternal figure, you know? And a female is the sensitive, the caretaker, nurturing, kind, loving, and relinquishes some of their things for the better. <clears throat> 
I don't feel like I can speak to men in the same way as I can to women. Fortunately, I don't know, okay, well, with men, a heterosexual man, I know that there is areas in which they won't confide in me. I know that there isn't situations where a man, a heterosexual man, will talk to me in the same way that they could, to, they, they, even to their, among their peers, they can't. Like mostly, in most situations, men and women rise each other up respectively. But with men, there is, it's either when the man breaks up with someone, it, they antagonize their, the, the female counterpart or their relationship counterpart. And they don't really ask like, hey, are you actually okay? How is this affecting you? I know you're sad. But like they try to go into partying or making things better by any other degree instead of facing it and talking about it. And I don't want that for people. And with women, you know, you can be, you can cry. Unfortunately, given, I don't know if this is a blessing or a curse, but being ostracized and put in this middle ground, I have never felt like I couldn't cry. I've never felt like I needed to hide my interests because everyone's already gonna have different expectations of me because they do see me as a gay person. They won't think what I'm doing is out of the norm because gays are already depicted as something different. And so me dressing this way doesn't strike anyone as different, but me dressing this way conveys that I am gay. At least for now. It's bad knowing these statistics, and I know I myself can't do anything for these people. There's men who I know, and you know, I try to befriend them, but men aren't gonna, gonna want to be friends with me. And it's not that they're inherently homophobic or anything, but in most situations, it's a person that says, you know, I don't mind gay people. And they don't. They really don't mind the idea of a gay person, but they're not really going to be friends with me. And it's not like they harbor any malicious intention or mentality towards me. It, there's just something about it. So given that, I can't be the person to talk to this person and pull them out of their shell. And I know it's awkward sometimes, and I know it's hard to will someone to talk about something that's you know is, is going to make them uncomfortable and cry maybe, but people do need to talk about it. <clears throat> One of the worst situations, I guess I can say, would be in my household. My father has, um, he smokes, he drinks a lot more than he should and a lot more than is probably healthy, but he was raised in arguably kind of a third worldish country and he did fall under the patriarchal society and so he's around like 40 now so you could argue that it's a little late to change I don't think it's late to change but he's unwilling to change because um, well first of all men are not supposed to be the caretakers and they're not supposed to show weakness to him he's never told any of us my, si my siblings or us his children that he loves us and you know, my mother has told us, like, oh, hey, you know, your father loves you, and this and that. She tells us, and so through her, we believe that, because he really kind of only does communicate with her, but not really that much either. He's never said, hey, I'm having a hard day, could you maybe ease up on me a little? Or, hey, guys, I don't really want to talk right now, I'm not feeling too well. He never says anything. For the most part, he also doesn't really talk to us at all, because he's just supposed to provide, right? And, unfortunately, there are situations where my mother ended up providing more than he does, and that caused an imbalance and conflict between our parents. And that's terrible. I, want, I don't want that for anyone else. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this story to make you feel bad for me. I'm not making, I don't want anyone to pity me. I just want people to help each other out. I don't want anyone to be sad. I know that I, even though there came bad things with being homosexual, I'm glad that I don't have to feel like I can't cry, and that I can, I, among myself, I can only talk normally and truthfully to women or to fellow gay people because they also, like LGBT people, because they also know what it's like to be in that in-between where you understand and have both those situations, um, both those gender roles within your reach, or like, you know, pushed on to you. I don't want anybody, I don't know, I know, I know that I can't do this for other people. I know that I can't help everyone because they're not going to be my friend and they're not going to open up to me because 
maybe there will be some discomfort. And I don't, I know that, that's okay. I don't mind that there is discomfort with me. I don't, I just don't want anyone to be sad. If I could help my father, I would, but I can't. I mean, to, he doesn't, he already doesn't really like gay people, which is like, oof, that's not the best situation. But despite that, I wish that things were better for him. I wish that he could feel comfortable talking to us. I wish, you know, maybe he would say, hey, I love you guys, or like, I liked, I genuinely liked spending time today together, things like that, but he won't, and he can't, to him. I don't want that for anyone else. I don't want, you know, other children to have an emotionally deaf parent. And I don't want peers to feel like they can't talk to people. I don't want people out there killing themselves with substances because they don't feel like they can cry in public, that they can cry to their friends and they can't talk about things. It's only, I've only ever seen in romance movies that now that this guy dates this girl, he opens up and he's softer and kinder, but only to her. And that's nice, but that's not good either. That's not helping anybody. That's not helping that person better themselves. That's only giving them that one emotional outlet. And in most situations that can be bad because then you're projecting everything that you have and that you've kept up to that person, and it's nice, it will help you grow still, but pushing it all onto one person, them being your only source to talk to, if you break up with that person, it'll, it'll leave you, it'll close you up more. I don't want that for people. I don't, I know that a relationship can be something that's nice, but even among some situa- some romantic situations and some people, that isn't enough to make them talk to people. So I, I ask you, really, I do, among your friends, male, female, either, ask them, even if you know that something really is bothering them, and even if you're out of touch with understanding that maybe something is more, think about how a normal person would react, or maybe someone in a movie would react to the situation. If it's something that you know is catastrophic, if someone's passed, if something, if things are getting out of hand, if they've broken up with someone, please, I really do beg of you, ask them. Even if it makes you uncomfortable to know if they're gonna cry, or even if you have to push a little, I just don't want people to go out there and do drugs and end up dead in a ditch, overdose, or take their anger out, or their emotionally suppressed things, and physically project that onto other people. I don't want that for anybody. I don't want people to be sad. I don't want people to hide what they feel. I want people to be able to communicate. I want people to cry in public if they feel like they have to. If someone's overwhelmed, I really do want them to let it out by some degree, something healthy. I don't, so, I guess that's my topic, you know, or, I don't mind the feminist movement, it is about equality, and right now, women are put in the position of femininity, which really equates to emotional honesty and vulnerability, and what well, feminism is, equality between both, so I want you to try to talk to your friends, male, female, but right now, since I know what, where I stand as a man, I know that men are hurting more than they should be, and I do want better for them that I can't provide. So I don't mind the feminist movement. I don't mean to make to take away from the idea of the feminist movement by making it about men, but I know that while we are still having inequalities with women, I think we're having a, a real problem with the way men are still having to handle things, and I know some people are more progressive, and some people's parents did teach their kids that, hey, you can cry if you need to, or hey, you really can tell me what's wrong if something is wrong, because I know something is. I'm glad for those people. I'm happy for those people, and I'm glad that there's parents who have told their kids things like that, and I want that to go further. I don't want people to, you know, not tell their kids they love them, or not be able to tell someone that they're having a hard time. So, thank you.